a bite. Come on. Got him. And there's that gorge hook right there. All right, here we go. Time for another solo overnighter in the woods. And we're going to keep with our current tradition and bust out a bucket list item. So let's get to it. Over the years, you've seen me use these 55 gallon drum liners that are six mil in thickness, mil, M-I-L, not millimeter, and create a raised bipod or tripod bed. And it worked out pretty well. Now let's take that same mentality and take it to the next level and use multiple bags to create a tarp system that could be turned into a tent with a raised bed inside. Now here's where things get tricky. Do I cut the bag open and conserve bags and make more surface area for my tarp, which is less taping and less bags? Or do I keep the bags together? That way it's an actual sealed container that I can use for the future. The answer, it's up to you. You gotta think four, five, six, seven, ten steps ahead and determine what works best for you. For me, we're gonna keep the bags together, meaning one full piece, one full container, and see how many I need to create roughly an eight by eight tarp. One, two, three, and four. So we're looking at four feet and chains. So if I overlap about right here, should give me somewhere around eight feet in length. And I'm thinking one, two, three, four. That gives me a total of six bags. Now my bottom seam I'm gonna have on the outboard side so water can't get inside of it. So there's my seam right there. Now we can adjust this to approximately eight feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now right here, as you're trying to solve a problem by creating a tarp, you're actually creating more problems. Do I place this tarp underneath like that one and have one continuous seam that runs all the way down? Benefits to that, I save tape. Downside, what if that seam opens up, now the entire tarp is gonna rip. So I'm gonna utilize my construction background, welding. I'm gonna stagger my starts and stops, that way there's not one continuous weak spot all the way through. I'm gonna place it on the outside of this, Again, outboard is going to be my seam. I'm going to run a horizontal tape here and then my vertical. And just keep doing that methodology all the way through this. That way the entire trash bag tarp is locked together. Seven and seven and like eleven. I can handle that. So the unfortunate thing is, on side A, I taped the hell out of it. Now I gotta flip it and do it again.
As always, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon Influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. And if you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. the old armor knot to ratchet this bad boy. And tighten the tarp. For those that watch my channel, you know that I like keeping things as simple as possible. Why? Because it's repetition and it builds muscle memory. The three knots here were an arbor knot, a bowlin, and a marline spike hitch. All three of those can be derived from a marline spike hitch. So that one go-to knot, for me, it's a marline spike hitch because I can get four or five, six different things. I'll show you how to transition to those right now. So here's our marline spike hitch. I'm going to twist it over, I'm going to lay it down, and I'm going to pull a small piece through here, then take my tent stake, slide it in there, and then pull her tight. And that's what I'm using to stake out 99.999% of my tarps and tents. Now using that same Marline spike hitch, I'm going to twist it over, I'm going to lay it down, I'm going to pull that small piece through. On this end where you see that squiggle right there, I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to pop it through here, I'm going to pinch it together. And I'm going to pull this one and create my bowlin or bowline or bowline. And now we're going to create our arbor knot from a marline spike hitch. Same thing, twist it, lay it down. We're going to pull this through. That's our slip knot right there. On this end, we'll create one last overhand knot. And there's our jam knot which can be placed over top of something and then ratchet until it's tight. That right there was a honey locust tree and they're all over the place here. What I've always wondered was taking the thorns off the honey locust and actually making some type of fishing hook or a gorge hook. You've seen me dig in the ground for basic fire pits and find worms, so why not find some worms, cut these bad boys down to the size of a hook, and try to get some type of panfish, sunfish, bluegill, etc., and actually see if this will work. So let's give her a shot. two and there's three got a bite and come on come on yep got him oh buddy hell yeah on a gorge hook bro check that out Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about right there.
Oh yeah. Ugh. And we got a bite. Come on. Got him. Got him. Come on, buddy. Come on. And there we go. There we go. That's two. That's two. Oh yeah. And there's that gorge hook right there. Check that out. Yeah, so I'm a happy camper right now. So that's two. Um, really happy with that. But they're small fish, so I would need several of those to actually make a meal. But the theory worked, and that honey locust is badass. Truth be told, that was about three hours to get two fish several bites in between, several lost fish, but in the end, could I feed myself? Yes, I can. If you like what you see here, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. Then take it a step further, grab your cell phone, download the free YouTube app and sign in. This will give you push notifications when my new videos drop. What do we have here? We have little smokies, we have potatoes, onion, bell pepper, a little bit of oil, garlic salt, all covered in sharp cheddar cheese with some bacon bits. Look at that cheesy nastiness. Mmm. This is great. Hobo meal AF. Get you all in a few. Mmm. Mm-mm. So tomorrow we got some things to discuss, and uh, I just keep with my traditions and make all kinds of bad choices. Um, not entirely sold on this knife though, but I don't know, time will tell. So with that, I'll catch you all in the morning. It's like second week of September, but it's like some are still gonna say F you. The humidity just sucks. It's still too hot. Even with that trash bag tarp off the ground a good foot to allow airflow, it still sucks. So bed was comfortable though, so coffee time.
Again, you see me do this probably a hundred times. The six mil thickness contractor, 55 gallon drum liner. And that will hold my body weight, 225 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Um, very comfortable. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a shot. Something simple as a log like this with a spreader bar. Nothing was even tied to my poles. It was just stuck in between and lashed down. And it will spread that apart. Kept me off the ground a good six inches and it was comfortable. Um, downside, still humid out here, and you're gonna toss and turn, and that sucks. Our trash bag tarp that we made, we chose to keep the bags intact so we can use them at a later date. Um, utilize six trash bags, six 55 gallon drum liners, and that sucks. So with that mentality, if I had cut them open, maybe only three or four, um, but it's a give and a take. Tape held up well, that was ordinary, duct tape, not the Gorilla brand, just the, the regular cheapo stuff because I wanted to try it and see what would happen, and it worked out well. Downside, there was no rain, so I couldn't fully test it out, but the theory is sound. We have an 8x8 tarp in the A-frame configuration, and we're flying that tarp, meaning the tarp is not in contact with the ground. It's off the ground to allow some airflow. Um, happy with this. Another bucket list item crossed off. This is that same cold handle skillet that we seasoned last week. And if you notice watching that segment right there, the eggs were just peeling right off of it. So it worked out well. And I'll tell you what, this uh, jalapeno spam, that's a first for me. And you can actually taste it. There's a jalapeno kick in this. Yeah, it's good. Get some cheese, some Tabasco, maybe some onions. Bell pepper. Yeah, I'll get ahead of this for next week and then we'll actually do a better breakfast. Until then, catch you all in a few. All right, so some are eagerly waiting for my response to a response but it's actually in reality a response to a continuation and here's my take on this um, everything I said in last week's video I stand by 110 percent and twice on Sundays um, with interest take it a step further everything I said with the videos that would follow were 100% true. Um, moving forward, I'm not going to talk about it no more. And here's why. Because there's no gain in it. It's not profitable for me. It doesn't help me. Um, it only produces bad publicity and in turn helps that individual. The highest rated video he's had in over a year was one that's click baited with my picture and a thumbnail along with a few others. So why give him or his channel any more play than he's already gotten? Congratulations, you got that bump. Now, what I ask is that you walk away because I'm washing my hands of this. I want nothing more to do with it. Um, again, there's no gain in it. Um, And all this is actually becoming now is a bunch of needless chatter. And back in my day, um, 
had several, or let's just say enough staff NCOs and senior staff NCOs that would hold formations purposely to hear themselves talk. And again, that's all this has become. I'm known for doing, not talking, and this is wasteful to me. What I find comical, though, is back in my day, with the needless chatter and formations, not a lot of people paying attention. And you fast forward 20 plus years, and by the view counts, it seems like not a lot of people are paying attention. So I'm gonna get back to doing what I do best, and that's doing and putting my money where my mouth is. Um, so any future attempts to re-engage me will be met with crickets. And there you go, solo overnight building a do-it-yourself trash bag tent and raised bed in the woods. More great things to come. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in three places. One, my Amazon influencer page, and two, my Self-Alliance Outfitters influencer page. If you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time. time for Corporal's final thoughts. Alright, two phrases come to mind. One I talked about earlier, put your money where your mouth is, and actions speak louder than words. In life, no matter what it is, your home life, personal life, your job life, your hobby life, civilian military, you are one of two people. A doer, a person goes out and does it, he's known for getting that job done regardless, regardless of how he personally feels, he may complain about it, but he's still going to do it regardless of consequences, either to somebody else or to himself, he will get the job done or she will get the job done regardless, no matter what. Now, a consequence isn't positive or negative. It's a result of an action. And they're willing to put that aside to complete the goals at hand for somebody else or for themselves. Person B, they stand by the sidelines and watch. They enjoy the journey. They kind of sit back and wish they could do something else. They wish they could be somebody else. They wish they could get out there and do that. But for some unknown reason, or known reason, they won't take that step. And meanwhile, life passes them by. So the question is, which person are you? And which person do you want to be? Until next time, take care of yourself and each other.